uh, environmentally friendly chemical clean with a premium price attached to it. Others where they employ hot desking, I know that um, they're worried about the bird flu and that sort of thing. So I do a, a keyboard cleaning service and a telephone cleaning service. They're not new products to the industry, but they're new to me and what I offer. And it's only because I went through this this assessment a while ago, thinking, how do I sell more to the existing people? Um, it's been really good. Um, both those products you know, aren't suitable to all of my customers, but, but because I know enough about the customers, I'm able to, to target those products at different ones, and I know if they hot desk, the more than likely can go for the keyboard and telephone cleaning service. Uh, I know if they are good for ISO 14001, they're more than likely going to go for the uh, environmentally friendly chemicals. It's all about really knowing why your customers buy and understand them. But you've drifted slightly into the second one. But let's say, because I was actually thinking about a particular example of your first one. No change to your product range at all. We're not going to introduce any new products. But let's take the cleaning. We know there's a springtime. So customers may be buying, uh, we're just coming and clean your offices, so we hoover and we clean the desks, right? We're going to take the window cleaning, the guttering cleaning, um, and the hoovering in that, and we're going to package that, and we're going to brand it a special spring clean. Now the customer probably wouldn't have thought of that from you, but there is no new product in there because you're already doing them, you've just slightly repackaged it and suddenly you've got a new product to the same customer because we know spring cleaning that time or the day before they come back from their annual holidays. You go in there and you almost call it steam clean almost. So that in a sense is your current product, you've just slightly repackaged it, given it another name and it makes the customer, one of the little boxes in the customer's mind, think, ah, yes, I could do with that. It's about getting closer to the most important people, your current customers. Now, if you look at what I've handed you out there, you will see on that sheet, uh, there's an example, there's, a, there's the first one. Current products and the current customers. Now, this is for the close circuit television sales. Right, 400,000, 13% current products and current customers. Covers current CTDD products, current distributors, installers, and electric things, increasing the penetration of Chubb, RVR, and Gardner customers. They already did business with us, but we're going to get them to do more business with us. We're going to put packages together for them. We're going to try and change their buying cycle. And we can actually target and put figures on that. 39, 49, 52%, over half of my sales next year are going to come from the customers who love me already. They are the most important ones. The second one then is to look at, now can I get, if I'm already in love, these customers are in love with me, can I get them to buy another product? Now this is where you went out, okay, no big deal. Uh, it was easy for me to get another product. It's still within the same area that I'm working in. I'm still using the same resource of people. But I've now got a new product to sell. Now that new product might be an amalgam of your current products and re repackaging them. Or it could be a very simple additional product. One of the things that's important about uh, the new products, sorry I've jumped one, about new products is new products cost more the new customers, generally. So that was an example of the new products into current customers. Okay? But the, and that's product development. Market development is basically, is looking for new customers. Now that could be those that are down, right down at the bottom of your polito, that have bought once in two or three years. But it could be new geographical location customers. It could be customers that are very similar to the current customers you've got. We take our new product, we know the product, we're familiar with the product, we've been marketing the product, either online or offline. So let's find some new customers for this, setting a specific target to go out and find new customers to attract them to our product. Now what we will know, what we will know, is that those customers out there are not buying from me, 
but they're buying from one of my competitors. And damn it, they're actually buying a product similar to the one I supply. There's nothing more annoying, is there? When you see a customer is buying a product I could supply, that is annoying. Because that means the, the competitor is doing something I'm not, and I'm going to find out. So, I have got to start targeting and looking for new blood for my current products. And that's the second one, which is market development. The third one is product development. Now, if you look on here, under B, current products into new customers, I've identified 30% of the sales target for this product group is going to come from this. Developing sales with a wider distribution network. So we're going to penetrate Vidicon, ADT, Initial, Real, Real, or Real Technologies, and other major distributors. We're going to target them, identify <coughs> them, and then, to take your point, now let, how, what are we going to communicate to them? Are we going to send them emails? Are we going to send them brochures? Are we going to invite them in? Are we going to go personally and see them? Are we going to attend an exhibition and invite them in? Are we going to do, start an email campaign? Email is brilliant. And that's something very much I've learned from Richard's team and introduced that to quite a number of my clients. Regular emails, building up a relationship with them, giving them little bits of the jigsaw each time so you're building the picture up. But what? What is it you're going to give them? It isn't simply sending them a piece of information that they can go to the website and find. It's got to excite them. It's back to this AIDA again. You know, I, I, I get them away by telling them. It's, it's, about, it's very similar to personal relationships. And I won't go through the example because I'm not time. But, you know, I can get the attention of the other half, of the female down there. How do I get her interest? Because ultimately I want to get to action. <laughs> the last part. So how do I get her interest? And having got her interest, how do I get her desire? The next stage. So if I'm now going to start looking for new customers and targeting new customers, and I, I know who I'm going to target, I have got the proposition, this is what I'm going to tell them, it's about how. I'm going to communicate. Which angle am I going to come in from to get their interest? Going to say, oh, it's that company again. I've heard of them hundred times before. They're just saying to me, hey, we'd like to introduce you to our product. It's a lovely product. It does great. I have never ever seen so many hyperboles in companies' websites. You know what hyperbole is, it? Fantastic, best, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Who should say that? He's hardly going to say, hey, our product rubbish. So you're going to say it's the best. So you can't send them something like that. So what angle are you going to come from? And again, that's understanding the psychology of the purchasing process. Understanding what is it that turns a customer on. Now we have spent on this earth, us men, millions of years trying to work out what turns a female on. What excites a female? How do we get inside their mind? We're still trying on that one. But it's the same with customers. We really have to understand what makes them tick. Because this is a new customer. And we're trying to drag them away from them. So that's what that strategy was all about. And again, 30% of my business is going to come from new customer groups. Now, which new customer groups I will have identified in the first part of my planning? Where are we now? Because when I come to do the SWOT, new customer groups will have come up in which part of the SWOT? Opportunities. And having identified that that is an opportunity, I'm now going to create a strategy to capitalise on that opportunity. And that, in that particular case, that's the market development. There is a customer group I'm going to go for. Now, let's put a whole package a proposition and a communication package to them. The third one then is product development. That's getting a new product. As you can see, that's a bit less. It's only 11% of the total volume I'm going for. So current products 
And to current customers and new customers is taken up 39, 49, 52, 6, 52, 5, 6, 80 percent. So new products, in this case I'm looking at about 11, a smaller part of my business, because getting new products is, is harder. Now of course if you're in a service business, it's an awful lot easier. If you're in a product business, it's that bit harder. But if you're in a service business, then creating a new service is considerably easier. So in your particular business, you might actually have, um, have that one at a larger, a, a greater number. So what we've got so far then, is we've got our strategy plan. We've already identified who are our current customers, who are our best customers. We're going to put a plan together for them that encourages them to buy more, to buy more often. I'm then going to put a plan together of how I'm going to communicate that to them, how I'm going to build that relationship, how I'm going to get closer to them. Then you've identified a group of new customers that I'm going to sell my current product to. Again, what is the proposition? Because if they're new customers, I have to steal them. And stealing is harder because I have to prove to them that coming my way is better than going that way. So if you want, it's a harder task that. So I really have to understand the competition. And if you take the military analogy, what is it I would do? If I wanted to overcome the enemy, what do I have to do? What do I have to look for? The weakness. The weak point. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with that competitor. I'm going to find out from that competitor, that customer's supplier, what is it they do I can do?